three to five stars or at like max breakthrough at least something like, something like that something along those lines uh, I'm just gonna go in order I'm too I can't be half-assed to just go in a certain order like go in like from three star to five six star scenario all right let's begin with who's first in line oh Revy is oh hey Revy is in here I forgot Revy existed um, Revy Revy is an undoubtable S tier. I think she's like a golden crown of the S tier lane. Her her main her only caveat, the only downside to Revy right now is her active slash chain is a three column is a three column um, range. C compared to the other detonators that people really like, that's like having two clusters. The fact that Revy is only limited to three column chain combo kind of sets up for an, uh, for a very weird relationship with the with the players. But since it's three rows, she does have infinite range on the verticality of it, so at least we have that. So it's it's one of those trade off things. People much prefer having a two cluster um, two cluster range DPS, which honestly very understandable. Um, however, Revy has one thing where it's like if the game is if the game takes longer, so if the round if the if the game you're in, the longer the game stalls, the stronger Revy becomes. So she just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and just really maximizes the damage. Not to mention she has diagonal killing. The so damage per round, especially for bossing, is incredible. It's fine. She is she is what you call a very solid S tier. Amy. Amy's actually usable. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be surprised. You're gonna be surprised with what I say here, but Amy's around B tier. Yeah. Amy is actually a solid B tier. Um we have to remember that Thunder Thunder, uh, Thunder is a very um, free to play, free to play uh, friendly unit. Uh, free, free to play friendly, um, free to play friendly element. Amy's healing is actually really good. There's not much to be like. There's, there's so much. There's not incredible amount of things you can do with it. But like, if you really need a really heavy healing. Um, really down-to-earth heavy healing unit in desperate needs she actually fills that role quite well she's the thunder so yeah yeah um, don't rely too heavily on her if you have like Nadine that's better but like especially when you're starting out and you just need a heal you just need to survive a couple of rounds use uh, use use Amy. Amy Amy will help you out pretty pretty well okay next up will be Beverly all right Beverly is S tier first of all she is a preemptive converter which is already good she converts uh, red tiles into yellow tiles but another thing is that Beverly's Beverly's damage is not that Beverly's damage is for a converter she's at it's actually pretty high it's a pretty good it's a pretty good one um, Preemptive converters are always vital to have, uh, and also Beverly creates enhanced tiles, which is always, which is something you should always know. Like enhanced tiles are always a welcome tile, honestly. If you don't think enhanced tile doesn't, uh, the, if you don't think enhanced tile do shit, then you are really, really, really not attentive of how good, uh, how uh, of the Alchemy Star system. The so place is right there, Angel. Yeah, Angel's bad. <laughs> Angel is a DPS, but she is very unviable regarding even even as an FPS, uh, even if it's DPS for Thunder, you can't use her. She she literally cannot be used. It's it's a big sag. Um, Reinhardt. Again, we're assuming that this is like um, at like breakthrough three, right? So she's SS tier. She needs to be a uh, third three BT to be SS tier, right? So if you don't have her at the max break, if you don't have a third third breakthrough, she kind of tanks down to like here. 
But if you do have her at uh, like at least if you at least have her preemptive, she stands at a very mighty solid SS tier. The damage she just does is incredible. It's just a lot of damage in one go. You're just you're just you just can't ignore that. Um, I also during her finale stage she also hits diagonal, which is always just wonderful to have. Whoever says no to those things are just incredibly weird. Okay. Dana. Dana's around. I, I know I joke about Dana on Frost, but like Dana's a solid unit. Not to mention she's. You can also get Dana for free if you do the, the, the daily mission. Like the. What was it called? Ah, fuck. They have like a mission thing, right? I don't remember what those were called. But there was like a mission thing you can do to actually get into the stuff. And. Um, you can get her for free. However, if you want to do, if you want to get the absolute most out of Dana, you do need her to be at max breakthrough. Aside from that, Dana is an incredible DPS user. Um, it's got a really good AOE. She's very flexible with it. And she's got a really good equipment skill. And the more units that help her out, the higher the damage value she will scale with. Unfortunately, her chain combo is again the same as Revy, and her active damage is not very high. However, and, and again, you need the breakthroughs on Dana to reach the maximum potential, otherwise, she's going to be very, very hard to just get into it. Schwartz is. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I should put him on the SS tier and S tier. <laughs> He's incredible. He's like one of the better ones too. Shit. Uh, S tier. I don't think I don't think he deserves to be an SS. Um, he's also another character you need to max breakthrough for the most to make the most out of it. Um, Schwartz is a Schwartz just cuts high S. Yeah, he's high S. Uh, I'm not gonna. These are these are not orders. I I I hate ordering ordering units in certain uh, certain scenarios. Schwartz is so if you know if you don't know Schwartz, his active just cuts enemies health in by 10% by 10%. So when you have a unit that you want to just kill, just use Schwartz active and then he just deals 10% of the damage. The 10% he just shreds it. It's a fixed shred. Um and also if and also um if the enemies are lower than 10%, like if the enemy's remaining health is lower than 10%, it, un unless they're bosses, um, Schwartz just immediately just kills them. Just it, they're just dead. It's dead. Max breakthrough, she get he gets the he gets his active is preemptive, which is by far one of the best things ever. Imagine imagine you're fighting a boss with two million health, right? The boss has two million health, and he and the boss is like, ha ha ha! I have two million health. I am so fucking tanky. And then Schwartz just fucking nicks 200,000 in one turn. <laughs> the boss just becomes, oh wait, holy fuck, what just happened? <laughs> and the cooldown on his skill is actually three. It's not, it's not long. It's definitely not the longest. So yeah, uh, it's incredibly insane how much you can actually use him. Um, you you probably won't see Schwartz be used in like mid game or early game, but in end game you're gonna you're gonna end up using Schwartz once in a while. I wish I had breakthroughs on Schwartz. He's so broken. Yeah, he's incredibly broken. Um, Groner is also an S tier. Again, again, if you're gonna see this. Preemptive converters are always most likely just gonna be an S tier constantly. She does have stun. She no stun, not stun. She she does have paralysis. Unfortunately, that paralysis has a, it is chance based. You have a fifty percent chance, if I recall correctly, and you actually actually have to hit the her her chain combo, which isn't that damaging either. The only reason she's just, she sticks out as a really good unit is that she is a preemptive converter, and that's just, honestly only there it is paralyzed. When Paralyzed procs up, though, when Paralyzed procs up, it's it's actually it's actually ridiculous because imagine you're in a stage where there's multiple enemies. 
and she just paralyzes most of the enemies that could be your lifeline that could actually prevent you from getting hit by like from six enemies down to two so incredibly valuable when it works but when it doesn't work especially like codex oh well ah tessa ah tessa ah tessa ah tessa she's she's s tier <laughs> she's a sup she's a she's 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 an s tier i don't care even without the breakthroughs even if she doesn't have all the breakthroughs it doesn't care it doesn't it doesn't care she's a literal nuke she deals pretty good damage stack up all of her stack up from the actives and then just let it all around and you also have a free pull she pull she cc's enemies for free i and i don't i don't i don't think people understand how valuable that actually is tessa is an unde undeniable s tier and if everyone and if anyone thinks tessa is like lower than s tier they are fucking high like i would literally just call them stupid Lilium Lilium does a couple of things. Lilium can actually Lilium has knockback. She can apply slow and she shreds defense on enemies. However, she her damage is very bad because she's a support unit. She's like she's like what your average support unit is thought of by multiple people, aka just don't do damage but has really good utility. But she's not as useless as, you know, Angel is. Angel is actually fucking useless. So you use Lil Lilium, however, has way more use than her because she has those debuff units and all this stuff. Um, of, unfortunately, you won't see her being used at all in mid game. Only only in early game will you, will you see Lilium being used. But aside from that, like, you're not going to see her being used at all. Florine can be very divisive with people but I'm going to go out on a limb and just say she's an SS tier honestly I think she's okay I think it's so let's let's disregard the let's regard the fact that like you know with regard the fact of all everyone's kits I think Florian is single-handedly the best character in Thunder a lot of people think Reinhardt or M Michael is or is the best unit in the Thunder Aurorian lineup, but I think Florian is single-handedly the best one yet. Not only does she actually pushes the double S damage DPS units, but she also buffs Thunder damage, and also she has a her her scaling for the second uh, for the second chain is 95%. It's incredible how much she can do. Unfortunately, she needs to have BT3. She needs to have a third breakthrough to make it actually super worth it. Her damage, all her damage herself is not is not low either. It's actually incredibly high. Hold on, let me actually look. Florine, Florine's attack stat at level eighty is three point one k. That's a, that's quite a bit. That's incredibly low. And yeah, she needs to she well, she needs to be she needs to get into Aurora time like plus fifteen tiles to be the most optimal. But if if you're using Florine's active, you you are going to. It's kind of a given that you're going to have to hit Aurora time. Her breakthrough is printed. Yeah, her third breakthrough is preemptive. Her max breakthrough loses one cooldown. So it turns from a four round cooldown to a three round cooldown. It's incredible how much you can do. Um, a lot of people again. I think. I think. I think. I think even. I may be corrected. I may be corrected immediately, but like the Bethel Frankel or like the the community online tier list for the for units, I feel like they're heavily biased on. I feel like they're a little too biased on DPS and just the damage value they do. But when I look at the kits and how much she actually like how much Florian is able to supply for the team and for herself, I think she is she herself is the best unit. <laughs> Speaking of, now we're in the Rabbi situation. Rabbi is she's she's a global teleporter. Um, she's a she has a teleporter, and she has knockback. 
but you won't be able you won't you see her use both of them at the same time and also her damage is actually pretty lackluster that's the one thing about that's the one thing about this guy Rabbit just doesn't have enough damage to actually supply for that teleport she's just a utility she's just a utility usage and that's about it actually yeah, she's about C actually hold on teleports not that not that common in this game well in, in thunders it's fine Nadine is yeah is she s or e a i think she's about it i think she's she's a i just need to check her uh what's her what's your cost on this uh, uh nadine's active is three rounds ah that's actually not bad excuse me and her breakthrough is preemptive which i think we already knew um, Nadine converts one tile into a lantern and that lantern heals. She, her healing capacity is also not that bad. Her, her lantern placement is also global. So she does, she's not restricted by range. Um, that's about it. She just heals real, real stinking well. Pitman. Pitman is... Honestly... Pitman is about. He, so when Tessa pulls, Pitman pushes, and it's one tile, and he he his equipment converts into shield. He's about B. His only super huge niche is that he needs to be like he, he becomes with Tessa. Um. Push, pushes are definitely better than pulling. Because if you wanna if you wanna stay safe, you wanna have enemies away from you, pushing is definitely what like the biggest thing. The only reason people would actually rank above A would be like, you know, he works well with Tessa, but honestly, like that's that just because his synergy works with a certain other S unit does not automatically make them become an A tier. I think he still stays pretty good on the B tier. Requiem is a double S tier. I, I don't know why else. Is Pitman 5 star? Pitman is 5 star. Oh, excuse me. I'm gonna blow my nose again. Yeah, Pitman is a welfare... Requiem deals dirt shit amount of damage. Her active is just strikes everyone on the globe. Shreds defense. Um, I believe her equipment skills allow for a second hit to have after her active. She's incredible. She's gonna be used in many situations. I don't see. I don't. I don't see her being used any other way. Um. <sighs> ah yes. Uh, stay there. <laughs> By far one of the worst. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, Bona C definitely one of the worst welfares in the game. Just don't use her, Chad. Just don't use her. She's just, she's, she's suffering too hard. She may be suffering a little too hard from success. Hmm? Do you see what I mean? Okay, this is what I mean by do we, want, do we want the units to have max potential or not? Because if we have a max breakthrough nemesis, she single-handedly becomes an SS tier. Preemptive cross-conversion, not to mention she has a global snipe. And that global snipe is actually pretty hard-hitting. It's actually it's actually no slouch. She actually, she actually deals a good bit of damage. Um, her utility is incredible because you know it's a cross converter. Yeah, N Nemesis goes from like A tier to like SS tier the moment she gets the max breakthrough. It's incredible. Um, here comes the hot take, I guess. I I like to I like to put Vivian in A tier, especially nowadays. It, Vivian just. 
Vivian is a little tanky, by the way. Vivian's Vivian's kind of tanky. Um, she the only problem is that she needs to hit most there. She needs to hit most uh, most of the all of the enemies at the same time. But if you're working with like units that can snipe along with Vivian, a good synergy unit with Vivian is pretty good. Um, also, the more enemies there are on the field, she can use her active to create more um, yellow tiles. It's fine. Um, and then, and then when when her equipment skill, her equipment skill is basically um, gives attack buff to the Thunder Aurorians. If you can let that happen, holy balls, she actually goes gives so much buff to the team. It actually gives you a lot of damage. I think Vivian is, uh, Vivian used to be like somewhere in B, I believe. I think community usually treats her somewhere in B or C, but I think she's more valuable than a lot of people let on. But hey, everyone's allowed to have different opinions, right? I think she's an A. I think she's way better than a lot of people just think she isn't. Oh well. Michael is an automatic SS tier. I don't think I don't think that needs to be said. Incredible DPS. Her active is teleport, technically speaking. And her active also shreds HP. Like it's a fixed 1% HP per tile, I think, or or 3% or, or something like that. It just a fuck ton of just she she just shreds fixed HP. Fixed HP shred is always going to be extremely valuable, especially in endgame because there's just so many enemies. Should Vivi Vivian be on the lead? I don't think Vivian should be exactly on the lead. Vivian could be on the second slot, if anything. The captain already has enough damage going on anyway. <laughs> Putting Vivian on the lead, lead, and you know what? Putting Liv Vivian on the lead, that's actually not that bad. You can put, you can place her in the lead, it's fine. Um, I will say don't put her later than three. So it's like third slot and onwards, don't put her there. Vivian should always be a first or a second, all, all the time. What I normally do is I, I place my other sniper, like Reinhardt, on the first tile. Or any other character that can do global damage on the first for on the first hand. So what happens there is that the first captain will hit the enemies, all, all the enemies on the field, for them to be weakened, so Vivian can finish them off. And you're gonna have more chances where she can it, she can trigger her equipment skill than not. It's a little helpful that way. CL is an S tier again, preemptive converter. Uh, that turns from green to yellow. That's great. Always great. If anyone says that preemptive converters are bad because certain things are bad, then what the fuck? Um, unfortunately, she cannot generate. Uh, she can't generate enhanced tiles. She creates mines, which, if you play it right, the damage does stack up. But it's whatever. Unfortunately, it has a chance of hitting yourself. You can hit yourself on it, which is the, the one bad side to it. Eve is an A tier. Eve's, Eve has a really good damage per round against single tile enemies, especially when you use her active. Her active hits like a fucking truck. Also, she has. Uh, also, this is another thing that people don't remember is that it, when you use Eve's active skill, it actually is a guaranteed stun. You actually stun enemies. Isn't that amazing, chat? You want to have a round where you're actually free from enemy damage? Just use Eve's active, and you're you're generally safe you, because ever because everyone is stunned, especially in the well when they're in the area. It's so good. Um. Unfortunately, her chain combo is like senses, so why is she not S? It's because her damage, because her chain combo is actually kind of weak. That's the thing. Compared to other damage, uh, c compared to other detonators, Eve's damage is relatively weak because all sh because her damage main source just comes from um, from the active damage and the stuns. It's one of those things where the game developers made her made her active kit pretty fucking useful, but in at the cost of that, making her making her shit a little bit weaker, which honestly, it's fine. 
Isn't Eve stunning the last target she hits with her active? Yeah, but it's still a guaranteed hit. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I mistook that. But yeah, regardless, it's still a guaranteed hit. It should be fine. Her equipment damage makes up for it. And yeah, every eighth instance of damage? I don't know. When you when I look at it, like when you look at the DPSs on the S tier and the A uh, and S tier and the SS tier, Eve definitely just falls behind, <laughs> and that's all there is to it. She just doesn't hit as as cra as crazy enough. Not to mention her active skill cooldown is really long. I believe it's four rounds. Yeah, her active is four rounds. Which is really long. Her, her her incredible burst damage only happens after four rounds. It's a it's a bit unfortunate. If that was three rounds, maybe she could be an S tier, but the fact that it takes forever for her to come back is unfortunate. Thankfully, if you're breakthrough three, just like we advertise on this tier list, she does have a preemptive strike, which is what makes her a little bit more edge than, you know, I I don't know, maybe a wrath. Erica, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, Erica. Decent, but honestly, I don't see her get. I don't see her get used at all. Her, her, she needs to be max breakthrough for for everything to work. By the way, um, chain combos, chain combo damage output is bad. And very very niche character, and she her her equipment I believe, her equipment I believe is like the one that changes tiles or which one was it? Hold on, let me look at it. Erica, here you are. Yeah, increase damage to enemies with the yellow color, yellow on the yellow tiles every cluster away. It's also like not that super great. It's fine. Um. She has a reset, but it's still very troublesome. <clears throat> the only really good thing that Erica has is that she has a stun. She can stun. Sorry, paralyze. But that paralyze is just one random enemy. She she has a really good unit, but then she's riddled with RNG to make it like even be super viable. I think she's just C. Aho is a meme. Unfortunately, very unfortunate. It's it's just it's just cool down, but that's about it. Hey Han, we're doing tier list for the thunder. Okay, <laughs> Chad, this is what I mean by full potential or not, because Iridon. <laughs> Iridon, if you have max breakthrough on Iridon, she's an immediate SS tier. It's it's kind of unrivaled SS tier, but because we're talking in a sense that she's right around that three uh, third breakthrough. All right, Hen. Are you going back? Are you going back to sleep, Hen? I think she just left me. She left me. I loved Hen, but she just left me. Anyways, um. Iridon, if she wasn't max breakthrough, she would be SS tier. No doubt. But again, we're going with like mid game. So we're not we're not fooling her, pulling putting her in full max potential. So she's a solid, respectable S tier. Third preemptive just cuts down her cooldown to by, by one cooldown. By one turn. So instead of having fucking I believe four of four cooldown, instead of four cooldown, she her cooldown becomes three. Not to mention she creates prison tiles, and not to mention on her on ascension she convert the converts the tiles she converts into enhanced uh, into prison tiles is also becomes an enhanced tiles. No, it's four. I'm pretty sure it's four. Hold on, let me see. Oh no, never mind. Enhanced tile is the one. Oh yeah, I mixed it up. Might be, might be, might be, might be. My bad, my bad, my bad. That's my bad. Her prison tile becoming enhanced tiles in her is a third breakthrough, which is not too great, but whatever. 
Uh, three cooldown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might be, might be. Yeah, then she's still a respectable S tier. It still does not, it still does not boost her up to double S, unfortunately. Pollux. Oh, I don't have a lot of nice things to say about Pollux, unfortunately. Pollux is a whale unit. <laughs> Pollux has, Paul, a lot of people say things about Pollux is that if you're not a whale, if you're not a whale, don't pull for Pollux. But assuming that you do have her at 3 Breakthrough, she is kind of an SS tier at Breakthrough 3. Ah, uh, actually, hmm. I think, all right, you know what, not SS tier, S, S tier, S tier is fine. The all, I think, I think people give her an SS tier because she, she just needs third breakthrough compared to Hetty and Carly needing, um, needing mass breakthrough for a preemptive and they teleport. But her setup, her line conversion setup is actually incredibly good. Um, tour I'm sorry, tour D. Okay, you know what? Hold on. We can't touch God himself. There. We can't touch God himself. We just can't. We just can't, chat. Alright, um... Mia... Mia has a global... She, Mia has a nuke, a global nuke, pretty good damage actually. She has a really good DPR. Um, if you can't kill by chain kills, then her most of her full kit gets a little bit kecked a little bit. Um, Mia is just about decent. She's not incredible. She gets outpaced real fucking hard. That's about it for her. Like there's, there's like I can't say much about it because that's just what what it is. And now we're into Luke. Now Luke is funny, but in general Luke is a solid S tier. Luke hits like a truck. It's mostly because he he he's evening out the damages per per tick. But like when you add all the tick damage into one, my God, does he actually hit real hard? Not to mention her equipment is his his equipment is extremely useful. If the enemies start moving, they take damage because of his stacks. Incredible. Now, honestly, there's really not much to say aside from that. There was a time where they there was a time people thought um, Hachi and Jin was going to outpace Tessa. People were wrong. <laughs> he they are in fact bad. Well, actually, they're good, but they're not. They're not Tessa. <laughs> As a thing, Hachinjin are not Tessa. If you have a Tessa, you 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 will never use Hachinjin. They they do have really good op really good setups that you can use, so make sure that most of the enemies can hit. But aside from that, it's just they're just their chain combo damage is bad. S the setup you need to actually put is incredible, but like fine. It's just. You know, the only big thing is their damage, active damage is incredibly high. It's just, yeah, that's about it. Their, 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 their active damage is incredible high, but aside from that, it's just poopy. I'm going to, I'm going to put these two later. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put these two in the end. It's a bit of a thing. Sadie. Or Saudi, I don't know how you guys want to call it. Saudi, Saudi, I don't care. Actually, gosh, Sadie's good. Sadie hits like a fucking truck too. I, I, you know what? There, Sadie. The fact that she has a permanent attack buff already sets up a good precedent. Basic attack is increased by thirty. The only peep, the only thing people feel like Sadie's not good is because after the third act of third um, normal hit, she just doesn't hit anymore. But like that actually just in that actually spikes 
So instead of not attacking the enemy, what she does is she puts that into a stack, a point. Uh, yeah, there it is, crash point. And then when we get to the, um, and then when we get to the active skill damage, the crash point just the crash point gets spent for twenty percent extra damage. It's just extra damage on the top of that. Not to mention her. Um, uh, and uh, okay, so when so another thing about it is she knocks back enemies, but if the if the enemy stops, gets knocked back. So when it's when, it, when we call it we call it the blocked. So so that means it can't go any farther back, or it gets it it gets into the push block. The pushback gets blocked by another enemy. The enemy gets even more damage, and they get stunned. And it, it it's like baseball. And if you knock an enemy into another enemy, that the the sec the enemy that gets hit by the pushback, the by but the another enemy's uh, pushback also gets hit and gets done. Amazing. Her damage turnout at the end is incredible. Um, she's not Tessa worthy, so Tessa's still incredibly fucked up. But Sadie herself is no slouch. Ah, Roy, the best waifu. And the best husbando, and evidently very respectable S tier. Conversion as well as healing altogether and some sniper damage. If he's not if he's not incredible, I don't know why. I don't know what else is. It's also it's like also like because he's he's also a part fire. So he can heal not only on thunder and fire, but he can also heal on fire. So he has more flexibility than say Nadine. Nadine, Nadine flexibility, more healing than Nadine. Not to mention she just he's just more flexible than Nadine. Amy and eh, whatever. When you level him up and you, when you get all of his bees up up in one go, especially with the help of Exelia, his damn his healing output is incredible. In summary, Roy good, Roy sexy, Roy hot. I would like Roy to be my husband and my wife. I'm just the middle, if that's the case, you know? You see what I mean? You, you know what I'm saying, boys? Queen is a very respectable S tier. One of the best thing about Queen is that she hits twice on her, on her normal hits. She, she does like the double punch. Why that's useful is that she fucking kills shields. <laughs> If that's the case, you know those enemies that have shields, so they have to be hit three times for the shield to break for, and then and then the actual proper damage goes in. Queen just melts those things. Queen melts those things. Michael actually melts those things as well, but like Queen also does the same thing. Not to mention her active is a whole global destruction. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. The twenty percent damage buff on her autos are also very free. Queen just. Queen is unga, honestly. If you think like Michael, Michael is less unga. If you want to choose like the most unga, unga DPS character, I think Queen is it. Queen just, Queen is the ultimate unga of the Thunder Aurorian teams. That's what it is. Now, Unimit. Aw, oh, it's cute. It's a cute three star, a three star unit. I wonder, like. It's just, just three star unit. She's so cute. She'll never make it to above C tier. Now she's B. <laughs> Unimit is your go to unit if you do not have a converter in your Thunder Rock. You don't have. You don't. You don't have. You only have like Beverly or you don't. You don't have Nemesis, Beverly, Gronru, CL, or stuff like that. Unimit. Just go use Unimit. Just. Just. Shut the fuck up. Go to your Rorian roster, pick Unimit, and raise her. Oh, unfortunately, when you go to endgame, she just kind of runs out of value, but that's that's beside the point. Unimit is going to be an incredible FTP, free-to-play unit, converter especially. Low cooldown, and and wherever she generates the, generates the tile, she get either an attack boost or defense boost or heal. Or like the, the the obstacle thingy, whatever. Unimit's probably one of the best three stars right now on Thunder, or in fact the whole fucking game. 
Amy's there also, but like, honestly, she's better than Amy. She's way better than Amy. I would rather use Amy even more than Unimit. It's, I would I would use Unimit even more than Amy. Uh, Kafka. I really like Kafka. I just realized Kafka is a sniper. Pretty good active. Pretty good chain. Honestly, I should put I put her in A. She. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I see your point. <laughs> Okay, Eve can be a low S tier if that's the case. <laughs> Good damage, but like not lower, not like B tier. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I see your point, guys. Yeah, Eve can be put into S tier, and I can just put Kafka in A. But you, ha but you have to notice, you have to take take into consideration. Just trust me. But Eve is the worst thunder detonator for six stars. Okay, just just understand that. Okay. Kafka has Kafka's biggest uh, biggest uh, uh, pro is that when her active shoots two sniper rounds, but you can you can pretty much very very aim it very accurately. It's a very like uh, as long as there's a you put a you click a tile and Kafka will aim towards that tile. She makes sure he goes into that. So it's very free form aiming. You can actually like hit like three tiles per per round. So. Kafka's damage output is actually incredibly good. Um, if you run out of any sniper units or D DPS units and you have Kafka, just raise her. Heck, I actually have her uh, A3. My Kafka is A3 level 10. It's kind of funny. She, she still hits like a truck. Don't worry too much about it. Alright, next up. Sanai. <sighs> Boy, how do I explain this? Okay. Sanae is Sanae is 100% an A tier, but if your brain if your brain is small, she becomes a B tier. But let's assume that you have her breakthroughs and everything, so she's a, she's pretty much an A tier. The only downfall of honestly, the only downfall of Sanae is nothing but your fuck your brain. If your brain bad, brain bad, Sanae bad. Brain good, Sanae really good. Um, some people have actually been found finding out the rule of thumb about using her um, puppet. If you don't use her puppet to the max degree, it's gonna be sad. The only reason, the only thing that's actually stopping Sanai from um, hitting S tier instead of A tier, is that her puppet deals physical, like raw damage, and not thunder damage. Which on a counter damage is actually like not whatever. Um, you do want breakthroughs for her for as well. Um, she also has defense and defense. Uh, she ignores defense if I recall correctly. But yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the one bad thing about Sanai, and it's probably what actually does. What does physical damage mean? It just doesn't have an element. It's damage that doesn't have an element. So you know how when you they, they, you know there's a counter circle, right? So if you use Thunder thunder attacks against the water unit. It does 120 percent damage. Then instead of 100 damage, physical damage just doesn't mean anything. It's just constant 100 regardless of what situation. Yeah. So no damage increase or decrease based on element, which is more, more which is more bad than good because you never you you will never use the thunder unit against the forest unit, right? Stuff like that. So that's why Sanai loses a little bit more potential on that. So I think that's the old, that's the one big reason she's kept out of S. Oh boy, this this okay. Keating is surprisingly Keating is a CC. Keating is a CC unit, and just as he just as you say about CCs, it's in a C tier. It has aggro. That's about it. Like really good aggro pulling, and you know, it, it gets to like, they get to like uh, pretty much command the uh, command the enemies to do one thing or the other. But honestly, when you're when you're using other units to just move around the enemies, when you have Tessa who can pull, when you have Pitman who can push, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of null, dude. It's kind of null. Like the key thing kind of becomes a null void thing. Uh, Anzia. Anzia is 
Dude, it, she's budget. If I recall correctly, she just kind of resets tiles, if I recall. Doesn't she? Yeah. It's not even a global reset. It's just fucking... It's just fucking two cluster tiles. She's she's actually terrible. Um, now we have the biggest debate ever, Chad. I still... I, I actually think Kana's worse. I still think... Well, first of all, they're... they're they still deal damage. They're around here. They're res they have respectable damage. But if you look at the... If you look strictly on 6 stars, they're pretty much the worst. Wrath's damage is better than Kana, if you if you ask me. The only downside for Wrath is that her, her cooldown is, is incredibly long. I swear to God, chat, if if Tordog actually buffs Wrath, so like if you if they actually say say like Wrath cooldown at max break through to three rounds instead of five rounds, then yes, Wrath actually becomes a very, very fucking good unit. But right now the five cooldown at five cooldown slot war well four four turn cooldown on third breakthrough, that's not gonna work out too much, man. It's just not gonna work well. She still deals damage, coping. Yeah, no, exactly. That's Frostly. What Frostly says. Does Tordog buff slash nerf characters? They actually do. They've actually buffed characters before, so it's not it's not within outside of the reality. But the fact that Wrath has, you know, Wrath has been skipped on a buff cycle already kind of shows that Wrath is kind of forgotten. Aside from that, so at least. Wrath can make use of the equipment, but Kana just can't. Kana's damage is low. Kana's equipment sucks. It only buffs her own self. What can Kana do? I'm sorry, but Kana's bad. She's like just. The only good thing, the only good thing about Kana is that she has a really good active. She pushes enemies with her active. That's about it. Yeah, they, they made... Well, Smokey was already good, but they made Smokey slightly better. Like, not even... Like, the buff on Smokey is barely noticeable. Discounting the buff, by the way. Um, Fro they made Frostfire really good, and they made Conley very, very, very serviceable. Conley is not broken right now, but Conley is at least very usable now. Frostfire, I think she's now super better. Smokey should low-key be a detonator. Yeah, uh, Smokey does more detonator shit than actual converter shit, but that's about it. I think that's about it, chat. Oh, yeah, if Excelia... Okay, for Excelia, if Excelia is... We're talking about 3BT Excelia. She would be double S tier on X, uh, if 3BT. If she doesn't have a breakthrough, zero, zero breakthrough Excelia should be an S tier. But the thing, the reason for, like, Excelia is really hard to place on the tier list, honestly, Jet. She is a broken unit, but she's only broken if you have units to support her. It's to a point where you feel like Excelia, it feels like Excelia is not supporting your team. Your team is supporting Excelia, so Excelia, in, in order for Excelia to just make your team busted. So, yeah. Excelia is very reliant on team, but generally, like even even if you can't if she can't multiply, if she, even if she can't replicate things, she, her teal, her healing is incredibly good. Her healing is is really high, and her damage from her equipment is also nothing to be nothing to be scoffed at. It's actually she actually hits pretty hard. Um, so Excelia is a stable S tier, and then when you get breakthroughs, then she becomes a double S tier. That's about it. Um, be and because of her conversion, I think Excelia is one of the more groundbreaking units for a Rainbow Team. Uh, but that's about it. Excelia Memory, Excelia Memory allows for a Rainbow Team to happen for sure. Um, I think this is solid. I think I think I think there's nothing else for me to add on top of this. Anyone want to say something, you know, before we go through it all? Where's Amy Mori? Oh shit, where is she? I don't see her on the list. Oh, there she is. 
I'm so sorry, Evan Mori. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I've made I made Evan Mori depressed now. Oh fuck. Evan Mori is an S tier. Evan <laughs> Mori pretty much places down swords, and then she's a nuke unit. She's she's another nuke unit. Um, if you manage to place all the swords down and you just fucking go through it, and then bam, she just nukes everything. Um, she's not incredibly good detonating slot either. Um, the thing about Amemori is you're just going to need a lot of setup with her. But when the setup works out and you have a good team to work with her, Amemori is pretty much indispensable. Um, she also has a preemptive teleport technically if you have like her breakthroughs. Her base stat is incredibly high. Her, her base stats, I, I was constantly surprised by her base stat. At level 80, Chad, her her attack is 3,600. That's incredibly high. I'm just saying that. Oh, not by the way, um, I think her katana damage is true damage. I think something like that. I don't know. I don't remember. Oh yeah, it's true damage. It ignores defense. Emimori sword damage when after like teleporting into it is is true damage, which is also incredibly good. And and even if you're not using her as a full like nuke unit, because she can teleport to any sword tiles, the tile that has a sword on it, she becomes a very good like evasive unit. So it's like if you need to get out of the situation as fast as possible, just use Emimori to get out of the situation. It's incredibly good. I remember some people actually using Soul, uh, Emimori against Soul Morph because she just she she just makes escapes escaping very easy. Um, MMORI is very pog with Tessa. Um, honestly, I like using MMORI with um, with Gino as well. Gino just increases damage a lot. She's also just one very, very good unit to use on a rainbow team. Just put MMORI as a captain and just be rainbow team. MMORI is just going to do so much damage for you. It's incredible. She's a great choice. She's a great choice at the end of the day. All right, and that's it in terms of the damage. In terms of the Thunder Warriors. Next week, I'll try to go to the other element, maybe like Fire or Forest or something like that. As usual, let's see if there's anyone playing Alchemy Stars on Twitch. 